Good evening and welcome to First Issues. Information and communication technologies play an immeasurable role in today's economy. The phone calls, emails, texts, money transfers, movies, documentaries and other technological marvels that we take for granted on a day-to-day -day basis but that keep the cogwheels of the information age that we live in turning. The development and use of these technologies seem to grow exponentially overnight. While academics are still speculating on the potential power of the internet, real-world revolutions were taking place, expedited by the use of social media. Africa shares the woes of the developing world, balancing the relentless push of modern economies with the nagging pull of old-world troubles and inefficiencies. Governments have to choose between pressing basic needs such as food, shelter and roads and between spending on a billion dollar networks, satellites and other hardware. We have heard credible stories of how computers, after having been generously donated in a big public spectacle to a rural community, end up collecting dust because nobody in the village can use them, let alone teach anyone else. Some regional commentators go as far as to say that ICTs cannot be given priority in African communities as long as there is no access to basic services such as running water, proper health facilities, affordable and accessible primary and secondary education, usable roads, and fostering of democratic societies. At the World Telecommunications Day commemorations held in Piqué recently, we learned from the Minister of Transport and Communications, Mr. Nunofo Mulifi, that these concerns are shared by some here in Botswana. FM. 85% ma sume a herambo be di lebo thano a batho ba ba ne ba khela bana ba sa go ka maranya na ICT bana ba bua ka tsela le metsi ke mo ra ha ka kwa to a bua ka bo internet re se na metsi ya no go ne ha go nna bonya gore o re ke ta na misa maranya ne ya adi thaile tsane ha yo mongwe ka hena ri kete pele nna se se tampele mo gonne ke metse mo le ta go bona ko morago go ta bona ke go go toropo mpele nna re santse re ba ta metse ya are these detractors of ICT development in Africa right should we look to addressing the serious issues of poverty food instability infrastructure and education before we even think of investing in ICTs Rather than just speculate, we turn to a representative of an institution that demonstrates the government's level of commitment to developing the ICT sector in Botswana. Their Vice Chancellor, Professor Hilary Inyang, also happened to be in Pique at the time and now shares with us how we can inculcate a culture of ICT use and production in Botswana in a society that is still preoccupied with basic infrastructure needs. Welcome back to First Issues, as we speak to the Vice-Chancellor of Bust about how we can promote a strong and inclusive culture of ICT use and production in Botswana, a country that, like other developing nations, has yet to fully cater to the basic needs of all its citizens. Well, um, as you know, uh, ICT is not um, a technique unto itself. It doesn't promote itself. It promotes itself through utility. In other words, there are many sectors of the economy, uh, energy, agriculture, health, that require certain activities uh, to be done. To the extent that ICT provides that utility, then it will spread all over Botswana. So uh, let's take, for example, uh, public education that would go down to the cattle post in the various districts. 
Uh, if we attempt to have universities just sit in Palape, in Gaborone, and Francistown, what happens to the need to disseminate information to those katopos and so forth? Well, it's not possible to get everybody from all the villages to come to school in those places, especially if they have jobs. So the extent to which ICT helps in taking education to the people uh, makes it possible for it to have a stronghold or firm footing in Botswana as a, as a society. So uh, ICT can do that very well, of course, you know, that it's possible to broadcast things. This is the reason that we are saying the capacity to do that will be greatly enhanced by the expansion in broadband availability in Botswana. How do we go about um, promoting and encouraging both uh, the use and production of ICT within the country, especially in a society that's still struggling with very basic concerns like infrastructural development such as roads and even water provision? You know that, um, quite frankly, uh, the investment in roads and, and water supply and all those, those are necessary. Those are sort of basic, as you term them, basic infrastructure. Uh, but you cannot just uh, end there. Uh, you have to be engaged in this new technology because those, I wouldn't call them new technology. They are basic necessities that every country uh, needs to have. But in order to compete uh, economically, you have to use ICT. You have to focus on ICT as well. Because uh, ICT is an enabler of advancements in those other areas as well. Now, you talk about youth. You know that uh, youth unemployment is a problem in all African countries. Uh, I would dare say not just the African countries, but other developed economies. So um, the best way to do it is to look at what is the educational attainment level needed. So this is why you see us being very happy that at the level of uh, diploma programs, first degree programs, certificate programs, uh, most of which are usually populated by people who are at the age range of 16 to 25. That's youth. Uh, these programs are being taught. So you need to engage them in certificate programs, incorporate into those training programs entrepreneurship. Let them get out and be intent in industry and get to see what happens there and so that when they finish, they are not necessarily those who want to be employed only by government. They have to set up to be employers as well. The government cannot provide employment for everybody in any country. We have to give them the entrepreneurial capacity to do so. And ICT is one that doesn't take very much of investment to do that. A kid can write computer programs, a kid can write linkage programs for utilities that don't exist. This is why you find so many software writers in India and China with such large populations of youth. Most of the software programs come from China and uh, India. They are using that to engage their youth in productive processes. Botswana should do the same. Are you therefore saying that an investment in ICT concurrently with uh, investment in infrastructure development will improve uh, the quality of life for Botswana? Will improve the quality of life through uh, improvement in service delivery and enhancement of advancement in technology in those areas. So we shouldn't be waiting for the basis to be covered before we address ICT promotion, it should be at the same time. Yes, you cannot afford to do that. It should be concurrent. Let me give you an example. Um, you know, many African countries 
did not uh, do very well with land telephone lines. You can count the number of communities in Africa that had telephones that came by land lines. But it did not take long for everybody and their grandmother to have a cell phone in the remotest cattle post you can think about, right? So the evolution to that stage did not occur through having basic technology of landlines. So technological leapfrogging is, is possible, leapfrogging. So we should do the same with uh, ICT. We should not say that unless we have everything set before starting, we'll never start. We have to do those things concurrently, as you have rightly pointed out. Are we failing to create a strong burning platform for ICT promotion in Botswana? I think we could do more in Botswana. Uh, we've not gone as far as uh, we should. Uh, when I asked this afternoon at the fair, uh, what is happening here in Selibe Fikwe, is it happening elsewhere? That is the convergence of issues and technology, vendors, and schools. Uh, that needs to be replicated in other districts, in other economic districts of Botswana. Selibe Fikwe has done this. This is why I'm here talking with you, and many others are here. The Minister of Communications and, and Roads was here. Uh, that needs to happen in other places as well in Botswana. Uh, we need that convergence. Uh, of opportunities, ideas, technologies, and programs to take this forward. ICT is an issue on which no district can afford to sit back. Uh, just look at what a small country like Singapore has done, a small country like Malaysia in a sense. Uh, without ICT, they would never have gone as far as they have uh, in the neighborhood of big countries like China. Uh, South Africa is close to Botswana here in distance, so Botswana can also afford to use innovation to thrive in the neighborhood of a big country like South Africa. What evidence is there that ICT use can improve the standard of living for those living in rural areas and even the illiterate? What success stories can we point to on this very continent in that regard? Although uh, you have um, Botswana doing well in mining and then also aspiring to do well in other economic sectors such as energy, uh, such as ICT, Africa is still agrarian. Uh, a lot of people at the lower socio-economic order still engage in agriculture. They have farms, they have cattle posts, they have all of this. So um, that's uh, an area that ICT can have almost immediate impact. If uh, promoted in the uh, NDP 11 that is coming up, uh, how would that happen? Uh, well, you see there's, um, uh, there's meteorology, meteorological services to help farmers on when they rotate their crops, right? That is uh, very computational intensive. There's advisory to be delivered, weather information, climate information, disease information to be delivered to farmers in remote places. There is the issue of cattle and how to rear them. Where do they have grass? Where they could lead those herds? There will be a time that you can't just let your cattle roam all around. The uh, plain grass and green grass will be targets of opportunity. That information transfer, very important. Things that happen rapidly and we need to have real-time information. That's what really ICT helps, the provision of real-time information without having to wait for months for analysis and data transfer. So, I, ICT has great utility in agriculture. There are many other areas. Take traffic flow control. Botswana has one of the highest accident rates in the world. Is it possible to actuate systems to close some lanes, to open up some lanes, and signal timing control? Things that need to happen in real time. 
So there are things there, even the benefits of prevention of accidents, or rather reduction in the number of accidents because they can't be completely prevented. So there are areas of the economy that uh, the ICT will have immediate impact. And lastly, there is that of uh, renewable energy. We have a lot of insulation, sunshine in Botswana. Why shouldn't uh, this be a country that is very deep in solar energy generation? It has already been demonstrated at Fakalani that that is possible. But what is holding that back? If the government now says that we are going to have uh, a renewable energy portfolio standards, what are those? Those are that the government can come up and say that 15 to 20 percent of energy power to be generated in this country should come from renewable sources. Then you'll have lots of entrepreneurs knowing that there is a market produce that. When they produce, how do they hook what they've produced onto the national grid? It has to be through ICT. ICT will tell when there is demand, what times of the day there is demand, what times of the day uh, there is no demand for them to do that. You can check a whole lot of things. Power quality, when they generate electricity from solar, from their farms or from anywhere, from their rooftops. How stable is that? Voltage stability, because this would have to be dealt with. ICT can be used to collect that information in real time and optimize locations where you should have the hookup. So ICT has the habit of being an enabler of advancement in many technological sectors or economic sectors. Professor Inyang is not our only guest to have spoken about the life-changing potential of ICTs on this continent. A couple of years ago at the 6th Commonwealth Telecommunications Organization's eGov Africa Forum, Manti Hrobla, industry advisor for SAP Africa at the time, detailed the solutions that societies who have embraced ICT use have managed to invent. If I can tell you about another um, interesting project that we involved in in Ghana, where we use uh, mobility for um, cashew nut farmers and, and shea nut farmers to access um, market pricing. So that's quite interesting how you empower, empower people in rural areas to, to find out what is the current uh, prices on the market for their nuts. So when it comes to negotiating with the buyers, they are informed and they're in a much better position to make sure that they get a fair deal. The Botswana International University of Science and Technology, BUST, has plans to be a major driver of technological advancement in Botswana. One of the ways they plan to do this is through the African Research Center for ICT Development. Professor Inyang tells us when we can expect to see concrete gains from these proposed plans. BUST, the institution that I lead, um, which is also your institution, uh, was established to help Botswana with economic diversification. Right. Now, so BUS has had to identify uh, which areas of the economy it should uh, try to impact upon. It is not just sufficient that we impact upon two, three areas. That would not reach critical mass. In order to impact upon the economic diversification drive uh, objectives of Botswana, we have to focus on a critical mass of economic areas to have claimed success. ICT is one of them. Okay, if we take ICT, should we just be local champions or should we be African champions or global champions? We cannot aspire to just being some small entity there. Uh, where things are done at the continental level, we aspire for continental leadership in the areas of our focus. This is why we are creating at BUST within the next 18 months the African uh, ICT Research Center, which will be possible then, make it possible for companies to hook on to those training programs in smaller colleges to establish alliances with us 
degree programs will be offered and that's how we intend to do it. We intend to see the real impact of our programs on the Botswana economy. This is the reason. Uh, we are not saying that we restrict ourselves to Africa. We want to compete. Most of the people that will be engaged with us are technology leaders in various places in Europe, in North America. Some of them are Africans. It shouldn't be that when they cross the Atlantic, they are not as smart as they were. So we want replication of what they did there, here in Botswana, at Beust. Any final words with regards to the aims and objectives, particularly of this day that was commemorated today? I think this was a very good start. I was very pleased to see the chief executives of the major companies, uh, major ICT firms in Botswana. I saw Mars come there, I saw Orange, uh, which other one? There are a number of others, BCL, BTL, many community groups, many technical colleges, representatives of the Ministry of uh, Education, representatives of the Ministry of Communications and, and I suppose Communications and uh, uh, Transport they were there. Uh, the minister was there. Uh, the leadership of the district, they were there. The mayor of the town was there. This is what is needed to promote a synergy for support of initiatives that cut across jurisdictional boundaries. So we are very happy to have been part of this. And on our own, we will go back and do what we need to do to keep our promise. And I suspect that the others will do the same. Our neighbor South Africa may have lessons for all when it comes to the expansion of ICTs in a developing nation. In an interview with the International Institute for Sustainable Development, Jay Naidu, chair of the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition and a member of the Broadband Commission for Digital Development, told of how, as a country, they had recognized that telecommunications would not be the spending priority of the post-apartheid government, given the competing social needs around education, health, and basic needs of their people. The requirements to modernize the backbone and digitize the infrastructure ran into billions, which meant they had to crowd in the private sector. He says it was regulations on community obligations that ensured that these technologies became accessible. That it was government intervention that spurred the research and development that produced the prepaid card, which afforded customers across the income spectrum the opportunity to own a mobile phone. In light of this, we can appreciate that both the detractors and advocates of ICT development in developing nations have valid points. Technology can accelerate social and income inequality, or it could be used to level the playing field, depending on how it is regulated. We thank you for your continued viewership. From me, Nameto Sibina, the team behind First Issues, and our sponsors, First National Bank, we wish you a good night and pleasant viewing.